While Canada is positioning itself as a leader applying feminist values to its foreign policy, two years ago, Sweden became the first country to adopt a feminist foreign policy. To assess its successes and failures, here's Clara Berglund, Secretary General of the Swedish Women's Lobby. We reached her in Stockholm. I think that in Sweden also there's been some confusion about the expression feminist um, foreign policy, but for us it means that you will have a feminist and a women's rights perspective that is integrated into every decision and process that you make in your foreign policy, so always analyze what will be the effect for women and girls uh, when it comes to this decision or reform or action. We know that women and girls are uh, more vulnerable and they have a gender specific vulnerability and that they are often um, face different um, risks and harms in conflict uh, situations. So, and also they are, um, don't have the same possibilities to escape and to um, go, go to another country or a safe place. So that's also why it's, it's um, important. I think that the um, shortcomings definitely is that um, still the government has a high ambition and that's what the feminist foreign policy is about. But still when the government is put under pressure and when other important issues are at stakes, we still see that um, perhaps women's rights and uh, feminism will be um, um, forgotten about and other things will be prioritized. And we saw that, for example, in 2015, when there was a huge influx of refugees to Sweden and 70% of the adults asylum seekers were men and 90% of the alone coming um, children were boys. So that the huge majority of the refugees that came here were men and boys and Sweden didn't do anything to help women and girls uh, escape and come to Sweden. So that's an example where the feminist foreign policy, when the government was put under pressure, really it wasn't there. I would say that the feminist foreign policy has been important and that it continues to be important, most of all because it's um, a message to the rest of the world that uh, um, in, when we are in a time when women's rights and, and uh, girls' rights are being questioned and we have um, alt-right and populist movements that are um, you know, questioning women's rights, it's so important to send this message to the right of the world and I think that the rest of the world and I think that the feminist foreign policy has achieved that in many ways. When it comes to uh, trade and relations, like uh, how are you bringing women's rights and feminist, um, the feminist agenda into that picture when you need to make choices and prioritize between different agendas and trade and the trade, that Saudi Arabia is a very important trading partner. So I think Sweden has been rightfully criticized about that. And I think that's also a good thing about the, the feminist foreign policy, that it's a tool for civil society and the media to, um, and also the, the broader public to hold the government accountable, like things like that shouldn't be, um, shouldn't happen when you have a feminist foreign policy.